So second part of HMO mini series, how to fix an HMO. That is how to put the renovation into an HMO that meets the building regulations, will make it ready for the tenant and will give you the best chance of getting it let out for the right amount of money. Um, and also dotting all those I's and crossing the T's that I talked about before. In a minute, I'll spin it around. I think the best way to show you is to show you a finished product. So we're in a, a, an HMO that's finished now. And I'm gonna go round and point out as many um, things that need to be thought about. And then you'll see the, uh, the thing that we did to fix it. Just before I um, get, get, go around those, um, I touched a little bit on um, building regs and planning and those kind of things. Um, so we've said already, we're, we're looking for a slightly bigger house that we can fit five or six bedrooms in. Don't do a four, don't go over a six. Four might be less profitable, not always, but it's just a, a trickier thing to get right. You'd think it'd be simpler because a four is um, if it could less, less and, and, and more is usually more, but not actually the case. A five and a six bedroom, if you get the numbers right, are nearly always gonna work. If you can keep it to under 35,000 pounds per room, that is buying it and renovating it. So generally under about 200,000 pounds to do the whole property, Per, per, per um, you know, for a five or six bedroom, and it does it does change a little bit because you know that's a very rough guide. Um, room rates could be higher or lower. A five bedroom could actually get get more than a six bedroom if they're bigger rooms. They're all ensuite versus some others. So that's a rough guide. Um, but when with, when you go down to four bedrooms, it can be less less profitable, and you've really got to make it work right. It's a little more finely balanced. Uh, and as soon as you go over six bedrooms. Uh, there are a lot more complications, um, you know, like, like we talked about in the last video. And if you didn't watch that, go back and watch the last video. Uh, so I'm going to spin it around. Sorry, to finish the point. Uh, building regulations, planning, licensing. There's differences between all of them. If you're adding new uh, connections to um, uh, plumbing, if you're making big openings in the walls, that's building regulations and you will need that. If you're fitting a new boiler, uh, there are building regulations, but your plumber should sort that out. If there are, an, if you're rewiring property like we are, again, your electrician should, should sort it out, but it is building regulations. So in an HMO, you will have some building regulations to, uh, to contend with. I, we, as, as a company, we employ a private building regulations contractor. Just do a Google search, you'll find one in your area. And not only will they come around and sign it off, they sign it off via the council, but they're kind of your intermediary. And whereas the council might say they're not there to help you design or plan, they're just going to sign it off. There's no sort of consultancy advice there. The private contractor, they will help you. Um, then planning. Uh, so if you're in an Article 4 area, um, well, if you make any additions, then that's one thing. You, you know, building out further, then that, that's planning, you know, putting an extension on. We generally, don't, to speaking, don't. But in some areas, if you've got Article 4, you might need to have planning permission to be an HMO altogether. You, know, you need to Google Article 4, whether you are one or not, and that might, may or may not require planning in your area. Uh, and then there's licensing, which is completely separate. You might need one or the other, or both, and they're independent of each other. So um, there's licensing mandatory across the UK, then there's also selective licensing as well. So it can be a bit complicated. I'm not going to cover it all off in this video. Just make sure that you are covered and you're straight. If you're unsure, find out more. Book, book a discovery call. Um, we can answer all those questions on those kind of things. So I'm going to spin around the, um, the, the camera now. And we'll go around the... I'm, I'm starting in the kitchen. I'll just point out all the things that we need to cover off on the renovation. Okay, then. So let's see. So first off, it's, uh, it's a big room. And that's important. You know, this is six bedrooms. There are amenity standards. Um, certain number of sockets are necessary. Um, certain number of worktop space, uh, uh, the worktop spaces, certain number of cupboards, and practically speaking, it needs to be needs to be big enough. We leave a little bit of room and space here, uh, just down there. Look for a, um, a table and chairs. Not all the furniture is in this property yet. It's uh, some of it is, some of it isn't. Um, there has to be a certain amount of cooking uh, facilities. So you've got a range cooker here. In some properties, in some areas. Um, well, actually, this is this this works well for us, and we know that the HMO inspector likes that. But in some properties, we've fitted two. You know, so that has got um, you know, technically, if you look at it, it's got 
Um, well, I think that's, that's, that's two ovens and a grill, the other one's a warming drawer. Um, but in some places we used to fit two ovens, two hobs, a little bit ugly actually, but uh, met the regs. Um, in here we've got one sink, but we will also have a dishwasher. Now, if we didn't have a dishwasher, you'd need two sinks. Um, dishwasher, a bit, a bit more maintenance maybe, but uh, tenants like it, they gen de definitely use it uh, and makes the kitchen look a bit more normal. As you'll go through, you're gonna to start to see that we, and it'd be nice if the furniture was in here because you'd see artwork on the walls, quite nice modern furniture. You have to make an effort with an HMO and we'll talk about that all the way through. But before we move on, I'm gonna pick out two things. One, uh, and I was trying to see if I can hold that steady while I take this off. This is a humidity sensing extractor fan and you'll see that right now it's spinning just a little bit. Uh, you can program it for kitchen, for bathroom, um, and they've got slightly different programs there, but they are always spinning, so always providing ventilation, and if it senses that the humidity is too high, it will kick up, and that's really important in any, any um, rented property, we'd fit that anywhere, but particularly in HMO. Next thing, uh, this is the boiler, this is really important, that is a digi-lock in front of the boiler. So the boiler's locked away, but it's got a door on it. That's a bit more expense, but it's really, do you know, I think it's essential, you must do it. Has to be on a digi-lock, not a, any other lock. Any other lock, the key will get lost. If it hasn't got a lock, the tenant will get in it and they'll have a go at fixing it or you know, doing whatever that they need to do uh, or think they might want to do. Now look, as I go open here, um, dark corridor, dark corridor, just walking through, PIR. So that's a light sensor. Uh, bringing on all the, the lights. That's, that's really cool as well. Um, means that you've got less um, electricity bills, isn't it? This also will reduce your gas bills. This is called a timostat. Um, we've left the instructions there. These actually get put on the wall here and stuck on so that people know how to use it. Um, uh, this is the time, so look, two hours, and that's the temperature. And there's only there's a maximum I can set the temperature to. If I actually that hasn't been reset yet, that's too high. Um, so it hasn't been programmed properly. I'm gonna come through into the dark corridor, uncome the lights, um, and as we go into a bedroom, you'll start to see, let's just have a little look around here. You see, look at the, uh, the, the sort of the, the colors and the, we go into a bedroom, the spec. Now, the spec is, well, it's, it's very particular, well, it's, it's, it's good, but it's not over the top. I do see some people spending, frankly, too much on the HMO spec. It, ha it has to be right, it has to be nice. Um, it has to be a lot nicer than they used to be sort of 10 years ago. Um, but you know, it's not, it doesn't need to be gold plated taps and um, lots of LED bits here and there, hot, hot tub in the garden and all those kind of things. It just doesn't need to be that. And I think if you're spending that amount of money on it, you're probably not gonna get the right return. Not Certainly not in any of our market at all, so that we, that we go into. Um, we've got a ensuite there, nicely fitted. Yeah, it's one of those ones where... There you go, you see, so uh, all tiles. Um, makes it easy to clean, makes it easy to fit actually, just you know, tile the lot. Uh, there'll be pictures on the walls, there'll be a TV on the wall. There. And we fit, and we've, oh, this, this, we've been doing this for a long time now, and it, it just makes sense to us. Um, this is fitted furniture, but look, that's the wall. And that's the furniture. There's no back in it. A couple of reasons. One, it's stronger. You know that if it's got one of those uh, cardboard <laughs> chipboard backs, as soon as it pops out, the whole thing falls off. Uh, this is screwed to the wall, you'll see there, and that looks a bit ugly, but by the time things in it, you don't see it. So it's stronger. Um, it's nicer to look at right now. If you're gonna have something in there, if that was a sort of a melamine or, you know, whatever, it, you'd, you'd see the horribleness. Whereas now, whatever color we painted the wall, it's the same. So um, there's quite a lot of furniture in a room like this, and if, it can be a bit overpowering. And we just feel that by doing that, being able to see through all the way to the wall, it makes it a little bit less obtrusive, um, stronger, like I said. The main reason is this is fitted furniture. So this is fitted. The builder supplies it as part of the main job. 
and as soon as it's fitted, it's only got 5% VAT on it. So if you can put fitted furniture in an HMO, it is cheaper. So that's a, that's a good reason to do it as well. Uh, through into the next one and you'll see, yeah, very similar. This is about as small a room as you can get. It's still eight square meters, just, just. And that is a, a regulation space. When you look up on your amenity standards, you'll see that. Very, very similar spec. Uh, and one thing I didn't point out on the last one there is, this is uh, the TV stand and you'll see, look, we put uh, an HDMI uh, socket, a coaxial, that goes up to the, uh, the roof, obviously, with a, a normal TV. And that one there, if you look down here, there is the other side of that HDMI cable. So if somebody wanted to put some, I don't know, a gaming console or, or whatever, something there, it, it can get onto the television. Um, they're all smart TVs as well, so that, that, that uh, helps both ways. We just found that. That's something that people like. Um, I will also, this is also a really good idea. Here, up there, is what we call the broadband shelf. So on there is a socket, and it is a shelf, and that's where the broadband router will come in. Uh, we know that we put it there, high level, and the supplier can put the, the, the telephone cable in there, and um, it means the broadband's throughout the house. We don't go to the expense of uh, cat fire wiring in or anything. It just, does, just doesn't need it. Uh, here's the um, uh, notice board. Important. That's where you can receive all our documents. Uh, there's, there's, a, there's three sheets that go on there. It's, uh, it looks a lot prettier than that when all the stuff's on. Um, not that prettiness is quite the aim, but uh, it does nonetheless. Um, up the stairs, hard wearing, grey carpet. I think this looks very smart. And if we pan around, you'll see it. By the time the, the artwork's on the wall, the furniture are in, it starts to look um, very well put together, nice and neat, uh, but we don't go over the top. It, it just doesn't, doesn't warrant going any more than this. We have tried it, we are going, spending more, going a bit all singing, all dancing. You just don't get the return. Bedroom, light on. You see, you see I think it's gonna get very, very samey, samey now, isn't it? Um, one comment on these walls, colours, so grey and a bit of colour, and can you see we've put these are purple, now whether you like purple or not, we have a rotation of about, I've probably done about 10 colours now, and what we found is, yeah, so we have a website with properties on it, and uh, if you think about how you choose a holiday these days, or Maybe a hotel or you know, a villa or something. Um, yeah. So I didn't mention as well. So the en suites have got uh, humidity sensing extractors there as well. Look, and they've got the PIR light sensors. So that will go off. Yeah. So these coloured doors. And if you think back how to how you uh, look at that. Yeah, a bit of snagging needed there on that door. Um, how you choose a, uh, a villa or whatever. It's, it's online, probably on your phone, scrolling through some pictures, and it's whatever grabs your attention first. And these colours really help. They really help it, uh, it sort of you know, pop off the page. And if you have more than one colour, like on our website, there's 10 different colours flicking through, it just looks really vibrant and uh, definitely pulls the pulls the attention. Uh, two things to point out right here. Um, alarm system, so smoke alarm. It's got to be a particular type, depending on the size of it, uh, the property or whatever you might need. It will definitely need to be interlinked, might need to be, or, and, and hardwired. It might need to be in pyro cable, so you'll need to check the regs on that. Here is a cupboard for cleaning materials, and that will be locked. And again, really important, because if it, if it isn't locked, then, um, well, you need somewhere to store stuff, one, and if it isn't locked, stuff will get nicked. And I didn't point out that as well, that's important. Yeah, definitely, definitely ignore that. That that's needs snagging. <laughs> I'm not happy with that. Um, there, that is the um, fused spur for the um, extractor fan there. It's not a switched fused spur, that's important. Our spec and your spec should be the same. Unswitched fused spur. 
switches get turned off. Which means there's no extraction, which means you'll get a call for damp later on. Um, my, my room's down by the way. You turned the extractor off three weeks ago and didn't tell anybody. Uh, all of our doors have got, and it isn't the prettiest, I'll give you that, um, but we know it's the most effective. Digilocks. So you press the number, you get yourself in. We tried electric ones, they break, you get phone calls about them. We tried keys, keys get lost, you get phone calls about them. The only thing that is largely <laughs> stress-free is that um, we, we fit them everywhere. In another bedroom, en suite here. And there we are. So, that's the, uh, the end of the tour. Back to me. Uh, I'm going to record the second, sorry, the third. This was the second. I'm going to record, record the third in the series, which is how to rent out an HMO. And um, it's the it's the it's the most important bit. It's when it all comes together. It's when you start to get the income in, and get it. It proves that it, it, it's it's working. So um, yeah, stay tuned. Look out for the uh, part number three, how to rent an HMO.